Right, the first thing that we've done is we've set up a laser level attached to the wheel with a target attached to it and we've got a mirror here the distance between the centre line of the wheel and the centre line and the, the mirror is five times the radius of the wheel so as the laser shines along and back it's ten times the radius of the wheel so any reading that we get will be ten times the bump steer on the wheel. As the wheel moves up, it also moves out, but the target also moves up and out, so the only thing that we will be reading then is the bump steer. The first thing that we've done is set the wheel at normal ride height, just check that. Now we're going to jack the wheel up for bump. You see the the laser moves across, that means the wheel is moving outwards, so we've got bump steer on this wheel. We've pumped it up to full bump. Now I'm going to just make a mark on the wheel, on the target, where the laser is. Now we lower the wheel. Slowly. Back down through ride height. And let it continue on down until we get to full droop. We make another line there. That was our starting point. So that's our the movement in bump. and that was the movement in droop. If we measure that in millimetres, divide it by 10, that's the actual movement on the radius of the wheel. The next thing we're going to do is lower the rack, which has not been modified, and then measure the improvement. So we're going to take 10 millimetres off the height of the rack. Right, we're going to measure the height of the, the mounting tubes. I think they're usually 111. These are actually 112, so that's millimetre for the galvanising. So we're going to take them down to 101, so we're taking 11 mil off, so I'll set my calipers at 11mm Mark them Check this one as well in case it's different Again, 11mm off Mark it and then we'll cut it off with a lazy man's hacksaw. Okay, now we've adjusted the height of the rack. Um, so we've got the wheel set now at right height. So I'll pump it up now so we're going into the bump. As you can see, the laser is staying on the line. It's just drifting off it now. By the way, if you adjust the wheel round a little bit, you can see the line moves up and down. But that's, that's not good. It's just going off the line now when we're going into a full bump. And it's about three. Three millimetres off the line. What that actually means, three millimetres divided by ten, is this is 0.3 millimetres out, which is acceptable. Let's go back down. All the way into 
full droop. And at the last part of full droop, it goes three millimeters off the line, which again is 0.3. You'll find that by adjusting the height of the rack, you use some shims about a millimeter or half a millimeter, you'll find that there's a sweet spot where this, the movement of the laser is very much less. If you have a millimeter above that or a millimeter below, it gets a lot worse. So the trick is to adjust it to Fairness Suit's sweet spot. When we said we'd take 10 mil off the steering rack mounting post height, we were assuming that you've not made any modifications to the top arm. Some people have made the top arm move further back by cutting this post down and putting a spacer this side to improve the caster angle. But what you need to remember is, have you, as you've increased the caster angle, you've also lifted the mounting arm that the steering rack sits on. So that means you wouldn't have to take 10 mil off the steering rack post, more like 5 mil. But don't worry if you've taken too much off the steering rack post because you can then shim them back up until you get almost zero movement on the laser point there. But you need to move it up and down to find that little sweet spot. Right, if you remember the first measurement we took uh, was with the rack too high and as we went into bump the line had move, moved off that way which meant the wheel was being turned slightly outwards in bump. This is what happens when the rack is too low. So we're at right height now so I'm going to pull it to bump. And you see the laser is moving this way which means the wheel is moving inwards. And as I lower it again, asteroid high into droop, it moves outwards. Now, what we've got there is a very bad bump oversteer. And to demonstrate what I mean by that is With bump understeer, which is what we were showing to start with, as you go around the left hand corner, the weight of the car is on this wheel, and this part of the suspension on this wheel goes into compression or, or bump. But as it goes into bump, there's a tendency for the wheel to move back outwards, so you have to put more pressure on the wheel, more turn on the steering wheel to bring it back. So, for the amount that we were out to start with, you would have had to put an extra 60 or 70 millimetres on the steering wheel to bring you back to where you were. Now, with the adjustments that we've made, you've got about 3 mil on the laser dot, which equates to about 5 mil on the steering wheel, which is as good as you're going to get. However, that's bump understeer. If you've got bump oversteer, it's really bad news because as you go around the corner, you put a, mount, a certain amount on the steering wheel, this goes into compression, it oversteers and it turns in, which means you've got to turn the wheel back 60 mil, which takes compression off the suspension system and the slack in the steering, so you have to put it back on again. So effectively, if you've got bump oversteer, you go in round corner and you put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off, which is really, really bad news. You'll end up weaving round corner. Uh, a slight amount of bump understeer is acceptable because all it means is that going hard round corner, you're going to have to put an extra 5 mil on your steering wheel rather than with bad bump understeer, you're going to have to put 60 or 70 mil extra on your steering wheel.